everyone welcome to this video in this video we'll talk about cloud functions and specifically about events and triggers using cloud functions so what are events events are anything that happened in your cloud environment and that you want to take an action upon uh, and triggers are creating a response to an event that is occurred is is something we call as trigger and you know binding a function to this trigger will allow you to capture the event and act upon it so currently if you see events these kinds of events are actually supported in the cloud function as of now. So it could be an HTTP event that you basically fire uh, an HTTP call, uh, and by that the function gets uh, triggered. It could be on basis of cloud storage, PubSub, Firestore, Firebase. Uh, so different different kinds of triggers. Uh, so let's look at a demo. You can come to the Google Cloud Console, and there you can search for cloud function. So if you search for cloud functions. We will see our function here. So now you can uh, click on create function, and we'll just keep this as function one and region let, let it be US Central one itself. So this is the important part. So here we could create a HTTP trigger uh, wherein we'll have to give a HTTP call to actually uh, trigger this function. But today we'll look at this cloud storage trigger wherein uh, if on basis of some event that happens in cloud storage, this will get triggered. Okay. So now look at this event type wherein you will be asked on what type of event you actually want to run this function. So the event type could be archive if you want to run this if a file is deleted or created or updated. So for now let's look at this created. Uh, so basically whenever a file will be created in, in this bucket which will choose. Uh, so I'll just choose maybe auto ml data set. Yeah, so whenever any file is added to this auto ML data set, uh, and which is which is in create, right? So if added, it will trigger this function. And you can do save here. Also, you need to you know check once if the, all the other uh, settings are in place. So if you want more memory allocated, you could choose for a bigger uh, memory allocation here. Or if you want the timeout to be more than six seconds, it can maximum go up to nine minutes. Um, and then, if you want to choose this uh, correct service account, so it could be possible that this service account does not have the proper uh, rights for you to actually run the service. So you could choose one of this. I know this doesn't have the correct rights, so I'll just choose this one, Test Raj, which I know will have the correct uh, correct. You know capabilities to actually run this so i'll just uh, you know i don't have anything else to change i'll just do next here it will ask me for the code that should go in my cloud function so uh, here you can choose between any of the uh, you know uh, languages like dotnet core go java node.js python so i'll just choose python 3.7 for now so if you see what it does, uh, this is a small function that it already creates for us, and which is called Hello GCS. And if you see the event, whenever an event occurs, it will it will give us this object, and it's a dictionary object, uh, and it will have details about this. So right now it's just you know printing, processing file and the file name of whatever the file we upload there. So it's a very simple function, and if you need to add any requirements, you could add it to this requirements.txt. Okay, so now I'll just go ahead and deploy this and uh, let's wait for it to uh, complete the deployment. By the time it is deploying, I'll open a new tab wherein I'll also have the cloud storage open. So I'll here choose storage. and uh, we had this one right auto ml data set so what i'll do here is i'll just add another file which is let's say web test.csv and i add this over here so as you can see this function has been deployed and you will be able to see the logs So let's wait for it. Yeah, hopefully. 
Yeah, as you can see, I added a file over there and it now says processing file by bot.csv. So this was the source code that we had put over here and that got picked up. So it could have been anything, let's say you could have you know read that CSV file, do some changes and then add it back to the same storage bucket or some other bucket. So all these kinds of things you could do based on basis of the status. So yeah, thank you for watching the video. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.